G'day mate, and welcome to Capture Industry with me, Judy, and welcome to a map that's not actually mine. This is Zinc. Zinc's 100% sustainable Kerland map, because, well, getting to end game or late game in Capture Industry is, is not exactly easy. It's fairly difficult. And then launching a rocket is a little bit more difficult on top of that. And then getting to 100% sustainable, where everything's coming in via boat, you're not digging or mining anything, is a whole different challenge. So when he said he'd reached 100% sustainability, I asked, one, can I have a look at the map? I'm really curious how we, how you did it. I would like to have a look around. I'd like to have a, a good, a good, you know, look under the bonnet, so to speak. At the same time, I asked, can I share it with you guys? And he was more than happy to oblige. So I thought we should definitely check this out because like I said, getting 100% sustainability is, is like walking along a knife's edge and then truly getting to 100% is like, walking along that knife's edge all the way up to the tip of the knife without cutting yourself. It is extremely hard to do. So I figure we'll have a look around, we'll poke and prod at a few things, and we'll do a quick tour. And before we start, can I ask, can I get a like? Because the base tour has taken me a couple of hours to wander through the base, sort of get a general idea of what's going on, plus the length of the video to actually record it for you guys. So can I get a like on this video? It would very, very much help push it out to the algorithm and hopefully inspire somebody else to try and get to 100% sustainability. Uh, now, I figure the first place we should probably start should be the captain's office. Captain's office seems like a great spot so we can look at the edicts. So, uh, for the captain's office, we have more household goods. That's the only um, population edict he's running. That's going to give him 25% uh, extra uni for 25% extra household goods being used. Household goods are not that hard to make. Uh, and the uni bonus, I'm guessing, is going to be required because he is using a lot of uni on what few world mines are uh, unlimited because this is not on sailor difficulty where all the world mines are unlimited this is on captain difficulty where world mines the only ones that are unlimited are stone sulfur and water oh and wood and wood they are the four uh, unlimited mines everything else is limited uh, and under industrial edicts he obviously has recycling one through to four that's super super required that'll get you up to 90 percent refund on or 90 percent uh, of your materials back from the recycling center also gives you uh, also has maintenance reduce of one and two for that uh sweet sweet 25 uh, percent reduction in maintenance which really really adds up in every single map uh, also has water saver number one uh you'd be surprised how much water you go through um between water you're converting to steam to run power and oil and all those sorts of things some of which you do actually reclaim back so that, that that's definitely a positive but also the set, town center uses an awful lot of water and actually farms farms are probably your biggest water consumer on the map and also because of the sheer number of solar panels he has it has clean panels one two and three which I hadn't really considered before now, but considering it's half a uni for 5% extra output, nah, not a lot. Uh, one uni for 10% extra output, that's nah, starting to add up. And then another one uni for 15% means, I'm assuming they're stacked together, which means 30% extra out of your solar for a total cost of two and a half uni is not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, uh, with that out of the way, I don't think we're actually going to start at the population. I think we're going to start at the very back of the map. So all the way up here past oil, past this little solar field, is the last of his coal. And I really want to show this off because there's not a lot of coal left on the map. Like, he does have some, but that's it. It took him to this stage of mining coal before he got to actually 100% sustainable. Coal is definitely going to be a... a a pitfall, a shortcoming, something you need to watch out for in every map, from my my humble opinion. Uh, the other thing we, we're going to notice around the back of the map and around other places is he saved a lot of dirt. A lot of dirt, a lot of topsoil for uh, putting down after he'd landfilled in different areas for more farms. Uh, working our way around the map, we have a power plant that's obviously been turned off, which was running on coal. Coal. Uh, one of the, probably the last few power plants. Uh, we also have the gold mine, which is, well not doing well um it's also out of gold almost out of gold as well we have a one of the many large solar fields and then we get to the first of the trade ships now we'll talk about contracts really quickly because he needs to import or export every different item he can using contracts to make sure he's sustainable um we can look very quickly and see there ain't a single digger on the map there are a certain number of trucks and i did mention and i did ask him like why don't you belt this why don't you belt that and the short answer is well he's got to 100% sustainability. There is, and because it's on such a knife's edge, there is always a chance that if you belt three more items, 
then you start using less diesel. If you start using less diesel, there's a chance that you start having less fertilizer too. And then there's a chance that because you now have less fertilizer too, one crop doesn't come in as high a yield as it needed to. So then that cuts back into that, which rolls into that, which changes into that. And yeah, it's it's a giant pile of dominoes you're trying to balance uh, one on top of one another. Okay. So contracts uh, on an eight module ship. So he's obviously disposing slag to sour water. Um, this is a very, very good contract in my personal opinion. One, it gets to automate all the slag dumping. As there are no trucks dumping anywhere on the map, all dump zones are being turned off. Um, it's very, very handy to have uh, a way to get rid of all your slag because you're going to make slag no matter what. Uh, sour water, when you bring it in, you can either turn it into fertilizer two or at the very minimum, if you run it through a sour water stripper, you can get back two thirds of the sour water as clean water, which is a massive amount. And then you could take your ammonia and do a number of things with it. One, you could split it into its hydrogen nitrogen components and just burn the hydrogen for power. That's that's perfectly fine. That's perfectly acceptable. Um, it's a great way of turning a waste product being slag into power at very, very low cost. Um, obviously, he's got food packs for crude oil because he needs to bring in crude oil somehow. He's taking construction construction parts and swapping them for limestone he's also taking coal and swapping it for gold ore and then he's taking glass to bring in some coal also solar cells for quartz uh vehicle parts for iron ore and then finally medical supplies three for copper ore so this is the trade contracts he has running to make sure he has all the raw resources coming in there's only two more that we should mention and they both come from uni one is going to be the rock mine so out in the world map he has if i can find it a fully upgraded rock mine. So there is uh, the sawmill. He's running this at, what's this, uh, 120, 120 per minute. And it looks like it's maxed out, so he's not using all of that. And the rock mine, uh, ah, over here. Uh, this level 16, this is maxed out. He has 400 people mining rock because, well, you need rock for a certain amount of processes. There are a certain amount of ingredients or a certain amount of recipes that require rock and have no substitute. On top of that, if you're making glass, you're going to have a lot of rock you need to bring in that you need to then crush in the gravel and then crush the gravel into sand. So, you know, you need to get that sand from somewhere. And as you're not mining it, Rock mine is the only way to go. All right, so uh, talking about contracts and ships. So we have uh, this particular, particular ship. This is bringing in, obviously, crude oil. We have a lot of crude oil, and we have a unit storage full of food packs. This is what he's trading, uh, food packs for crude oil. Over here, we have a second ship doing the exact same. This looks like it's uh, the backup ship. It doesn't actually look like he needs this anymore. But the thing is, when you're talking about contracts, you have uh, a cost per month and a cost per ship. If the ship never moves, you don't have this cost. You just have the monthly cost. When the ship uh, leaves and then comes back, you get hit with this union cost for that ship which is where the cost actually comes in. So having two ships just means he's waiting to waste a little bit of people and a little bit of maintenance with a ship that's potentially not doing anything because I haven't actually, I've, I've actually run the map for a little, little bit of time just to confirm that it stays stable and I haven't seen the second ship and the oil used that much. Uh, on top of that, we have a third ship. Third ship is, well, the, it looks like the original, the original oil import. Um, as we can see, this is sets to available to pick up. This was coming from uh, oil on the world map. All right, uh, continuing on, we have our first, well, actually our main oil, main oil processing. Now, I'm not going to try and talk through or explain most of this. It's complicated. Oil is complicated to start with, but it's um, it's 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 more complicated because he needs to come up with lots of alternative uses for. A, uh, for just about everything. So nothing in this system can back up ever, which makes it highly complicated. Um, like, you know, he does have fertilizer, uh, fertilizer two made up here, which has some requirements coming from the sour water strippers. But this is, has also, these sour water strippers have nothing to do with the main slag contract. That's in a separate part of the base. Uh, but as you see, we have a whole lot of oil processing. Uh, let's talk about you uh this is the steam input which as we can see passes through well that's this balance is split out uh that's a balancer to bring in which is prioritized from uh this one which is prioritized from these ones which are all burning uh what heavy oil and naphtha uh yep uh two on heavy oil so the priority is heavy oil first 
that for second. It comes into this balancer, which sends it out this way first, which creates the water to run the system, to create the water to make the steam, and then has a backup of this particular one, which is an electric boiler. Um, and now I have said multiple times, the electric boilers are bad, they're horrible, they're crap, they're not efficient, and I stand by that. The difference is when you have a crap ton of solar, and therefore technically the power is free, that definitely changes the dynamic. Uh, and then again, we have a whole bunch of boilers right here, which also come in here, which is again, a backup. A backup if we're not creating enough oil here from burning off the heavy along with the naphtha. Uh, and then as we continue through, he's got a whole bunch of crackers to make a certain amount of diesel. He's gonna need a large amount of diesel and he's cracking uh, heavy to diesel, naphtha to diesel, naphtha, heavy, naphtha, naphtha, heavy, heavy paused um of course he is taking hydrogen and nitrogen and putting them together to make ammonia so he's actually not he's he's getting out hydrogen through the hydrogen reformers and he's actually converting it into ammonia to then convert it into fertilizer one to then convert the fertilizer one into fertilizer two uh, another thing we're going to notice is he has a large amount of storage tanks uh, a lot of these are installed in series so we'll actually bring in uh, the fluid at the back run it through one tank into a second tank and then continue on and again big buffers are going to be very very important when you're talking about 100 percent sustainable base because things move and shift over time everything has cycles and accounting for these cycles is very, very difficult. Uh, same story, he has two giant tanks for diesel. Uh, that looks to all be paused. Continuing around the map, we'll stop here. Here is where he's doing food packs. So the contract that he we're doing is oil import for food packs. Um, according to his annotations, it's 156 food packs right here um, from this small assembly line. And don't forget, food packs require egg, eggs, eggs or meat bread and snacks which means you need plastic which means you need wheat which means you need animal feed to run the chicken farms and this is what he's doing to create create all those um all those food packs to then ship them out for export to complete those contracts continuing around the map uh another thing we're going to notice is there's a good mix of uh greenhouses and also irrigated farms nine times out of ten the uh greenhouses what's grown in the greenhouses is an item that can only be grown in a greenhouse wherever possible he has used the irrigated farms and i asked him again about this as well and it comes down to people and maintenance um sure you get a higher yield out of running an irrigated uh, greenhouse too but with 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 the higher water need and everything else but it's more efficient to use irrigated farms. The catch is you need twice as many of them to make up the difference. Um, the greenhouses too, with fertilizer and everything else, mm, cut the space in half. So it all depends whether you have plenty of room, at which point you go for irrigated farms, or you don't have enough room, at which point you may have to cover the cost of going for greenhouse too. Another thing I should mention is a lot of the farms are set to 90%. Uh, fertilizer wise, he has a wonderful mix. And actually we've got a couple here. So it has a wonderful balancing system where he's bringing in, uh, of course it's empty, he's bringing in fertilizer too, and organic fertilizer comes in this pipe. And then they each come to a balancer, which he's prioritizing in the organic fertilizer first. And because it's in a balancer right before the, oops, right before the turned pipe into the actual farm, it means the farms can auto balance between whichever fertilizer they have available. Like I said, he definitely uh, prioritizes the organic fertilizer over the fertilizer two, because fertilizer two is a bit of a rare resource, it turns out. All right, uh, so continuing around the farms, we have a giant salt farm. Well, I'm sure salt's very important somewhere, but the giant salt farm. Uh, we have bread and cake. Bread and cake are both made here. He does have, no, this is just bread. Bread and meat. I thought there was a cake farm here. We'll find the cake farm eventually. Um, he has every different type of food uh, being delivered to the uh, the colony, which again uh, applies a, a, a good amount of uni. All right, uh, continuing along, we have uh, the chicken farms. The chicken farms, the many, many chicken farms, which seem to be maxed out on eggs. So he does have some extra production of eggs. And then we have the giant pile of food that we're feeding them. Um, so he's bringing in a lot of excess food in here and turning into animal feed. Animal feed goes through a first buffer before routing into the primary buffer to feed into the actual chicken farms with an overflow out here to turn the excess animal feed into compost and then take that compost and turn it into um 
organic fertilizer. Organic fertilizer, which is something that I hadn't actually considered. Um, now I'm looking at it myself. I'm like, that's actually a really good idea. I'm using my excess animal feed to burn it uh, and, and supplement my coal usage. But maybe turning a compost and organic fertilizer is a better idea in the long run. Uh, on top of that, there is also, and we can see it just firing up right now, there's a backup backup. So should this not be able to process all the food, rather than the system backing up, it just takes the excess food and runs it out to uh, this giant stack of burners. And we just burn it off for air pollution. It's not ideal, uh, but again, with 100% sustainable island, nothing can back up. Nothing can back up unless it was designed to back up. And pretty much nothing is designed to back up. Uh, we have a whole bunch more farms. You'll find farms dotted here, there, and everywhere. Uh, we have... Uh, is this... Ah, uh, this is the biomass. Biomass into a whole bunch of compost. And then finally, we have compost into organic fertilizer. He only needs a couple of machines to chew through all the compost he makes, which I'm a little bit shocked about because um, I have three of these guys already and I'm considering turning on a fourth just with the sheer amount of uh, organic uh, biomass that I have uh, personally in my safe. And over here we have, oh, this is sugar. Sugar, which is going up to, ah, is this where we're making cake? Cake. And also more treats. They're treats for the colony, whereas the other ones are treats for contracts. And that's flour for... Uh, flour for ah oh, cakes, cakes of course. Um, also, we're making the, uh, the cooking oil right here on site to run, obviously the uh, st stack machines along with the cake machines. Okay, uh, continuing around the map, we come to the main colony, the main colony, and I do like a couple of things he's done. So first off, we might notice that we have a lot of foods being delivered via belts. There is still some food, uh, like eggs and meat that, and sausages that are being trucked in. He could optimize that, but as I said earlier, he got down the stage where everything was balanced and there's a risk if you touch one system, it might affect five systems later and may take several hours to show up. So I understand. I understand the hesitancy to just tweak anything when it just gets to the point where like it's stable. Everything's balanced perfectly. I'm not touching it. Uh, but yes, uh, I do love the way he he hooked up the uh, farmers markets, the food markets into the colony rather than, uh, as I've done, putting in uh, one of the decorations in the middle, surrounding with houses. He basically took out two houses and ran all the uh, food markets into one of these internal sections and then fed everything in with belts. I really like this idea. In fact, I'm probably going to steal it on a future playthrough. I've put all mine along the outside. But I'm thinking if I just used one house, you know, one house in one section, one house in another, that gives me a total of, what's that, uh, eight, eight of them. And as there is, what, well, eight per housing block. And as there's, what, 11 types of food, right? Uh, three, six, nine, 10, 11. Yeah, 11 different types of food. It means I could probably just do one of them and put another one on the outside with all the other outside services. And I like the idea. I really, really like the idea. I think it'll make things a little bit more compact and a little bit more nice to look at rather than having everything uh, whacked on the outside. But yes, he does have a whole lot of food being uh, brought in and a whole lot of food markets to make sure that uh, he has 52 months worth of food, which is an awful lot. Uh, in my case, I have a whole lot less house market or food markets and I just have one dedicated to each food type. It does mean it's constantly telling me I have like nine or 12 months worth of food because I have 12,000 population where he's got 9,000. 9,500 for a 100% sustainable base is very impressive. Okay. We have the Waste Management Center. Waste Management Center, which is paused, was coming out here and building uh, this trash lake or trash island, which he was slapping solar panels on. He stopped, ha had to stop slapping solar panels down because he couldn't make any more maintenance too. He maxed out his maintenance too. So trash has been moved elsewhere. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, we have water creation uh, for supplementing... Haha, -ha. the uh, population's water. Obviously, he's bringing out the wastewater. He's running through a treatment plant to recover some of that water. Taking the, what's it called? Slag, sludge. Sludge, converting the sludge into fuel, gas, and compost. Compost obviously goes off to the organic fertilizer, and the fuel gas comes down here, and he actually uses the fuel gas to create some of the steam, to create some of the water that goes back in the system. Also, we may notice that I'm... Oh, no, you're burning off CO2. There you go. Uh, so, yes, uh, burning off the CO2 also has a couple of electric boilers in here as backup just to supplement the fact that it doesn't have quite enough fuel gas to run this system. Uh, and, yes, that is because um, 
you get out 400 wastewater after you run it through these guys it bring it brings it down to about 300 ish uh clean water and then you need to put 500 back in the system so he needs to make at least 200 clean water somehow and hence a couple of these machines all right uh next along the list is we have the old iron mine as you can see it's been turned into more solar panels we have another water creation system which is idle there's a good chance maybe i oh, know it's a, in here as a backup yes so this is a backup water system uh yeah, backup water system uh, for the colony. And I guess, again, that's probably a safety measure in case anything ever backs up, which in the theory it shouldn't. Uh, over here, we have our inputs. So we have our household appli appliances, which is giving us a 2.8 uni. Uh, we have the household goods, which has that edict with the uni bonus. So we get an extra 20% extra uni out of it, which brings us up to 3.36. Uh, and then, of course, we have the recycling center kicking out a whole bunch of recyclables, which we're going to have to find out where they go in a second. Uh, we have over here making our good old rocking uh, rocking chairs to run into the colony, uh, and they are 100% belt fed. Uh, we have a microchip center, microchip center creating uh microchips yes of course microchips which runs us oh oh we got here already all right runs us into the main production hub okay main production hub this covers just about everything and he said it was very neat to start with and then spaghetti sort of ensued as production crept along so i think the one i want to look at first is uh if i can find it uh ah yeah Okay, recycling center. This is the first recycling center he put in. As you can see, it's terribly, terribly built in at, at this stage. Problem is, um, as I can confirm and as he has since confirmed, one recycling center is not nearly enough. So buried around here somewhere is another two recycling centers just to keep up with the amount of recyclables coming in, uh, which means, of course, all the outputs being the iron scrap, the copper scrap, the gold scrap, and the broken glass need to go to their respective areas and they're not coming from one single location they're coming from multiple locations just to make life a little bit harder uh we have maintenance one followed by maintenance two with a touch of maintenance three doesn't have a lot of maintenance three but he's not using a lot of it there's another one of, oh there's the other two magical recycling centers found them uh yes which then means all the belts merge together and go places uh so yes uh two recycling centers we have what's this uh this is PCBs for electronics too, for our washing machines, our washing machines, yes. Uh, we can see there's some electronics one thrown on the end or that feeds straight into electronics two, rather than it being in one centralized ca uh, centralized location. We have our electronics three production over here. We've got some random storage boxes for a little bit of everything. Uh, we have, what's that slag? So that's slag export. Uh, that belt's going over to that ship, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, that's our broken glass. That's a gold scrap, which is now belting out and digging to wherever gold goes. Um, yeah, so that's the input. It's not the input, that's the output. Oh, gold scrap right there. So he's having a big picked up by a truck. All right, uh, we have copper processing. And again, uh, one thing you'll find is, I think he's completely on arc furnaces now, um, just to cut back on the coal usage. So most of his teraflops in computing power goes towards well, arc furnaces and also uh, robotic assemblies. So we've got steel, uh, well, we've got copper over there. This is doing iron, yes. And this is doing glass, okay. So glass comes out the back. Now glass splits in two different directions. Uh, it has, I believe one of these two builds is dedicated to making uh, the household Household goods and household appliances. Uh, the rest of the glass actually leaves on one of these belts. If we're going to find the right belt. I think it's that one. Is that one for that contract? Yes, that contract and that contract as well. Uh, so most of the glass actually is an export. An export to bring in coal. And I find it interesting that the arc furnace is built this way. And they're taking the molten channels backward to run into the glass cutters. Yes. Okay. Uh, we have rubber production buried in here. We have acid production whacked over the side we've got a whole lot of exhaust scrubbers another thing you're going to find is going to be running a whole lot of exhaust scrubbers to make sure that all that co2 can be captured and converted back into graphite to feed all the arc furnaces rather than running them on coal um 
He has... I will get back to that one, actually. Uh, actually, that's more of them. More exhaust scrubbers. We have... Where's iron? Iron, 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 iron. Uh, that's a iron. That's steel. Which is producing 48. End of 48. End of 24. Okay. Alright, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. yep. So that's uh steel. Uh and then what else do we have around here? Try to find the iron. I was just looking at it, wasn't I? Yep, okay, that's iron production. Uh he's gonna be using a lot of iron for if I can find it. Somewhere in this mess, he's gonna be making a lot of vehicle parts from iron. I just have no idea where it is. Maybe it leaves that steel. Uh, maybe... Oh, no, that's all steel I'm looking at. I haven't found iron yet. All right, we'll find iron eventually. Okay, uh, let's talk about a couple of the other things in here. So, we have high-pressure steam. High-pressure steam, which is... Uh, that pipe, that pipe, that pipe, that pipe. Uh, sorry, low-pressure steam. Low-pressure steam from all the arc furnaces. He's actually using that to run a couple of low-pressure turbines flat out to make some power. Now, I do want to mention very, very quickly, in, think you, in case you're thinking about doing something similar, that you need an awful lot of arc furnaces to create enough low-pressure steam to run one generator. Uh, in fact, this is... So this requires 96 steam, 96 steam, 96 steam, which is, what, a lot? 288 uh, low-pressure steam. Don't forget, these guys output... 12 steam a piece so an awful lot of them uh to then create what 2.5 and 2.5 megawatts so a total of five megawatts worth of power and each one of these bad boys use 1.4 megawatts it's going to add up really quick uh, also it looks like there is a excess a burn off situation so if there's any excess it goes into this little low pressure turbine which is not very efficient but is running straight into a couple of flywheels which are set to priority one we want to burn that off as quickly as possible uh we then have the statue of maintenance which is going to save him another uh, five percent maintenance we have one of the main power plants i believe uh yes i believe this is one of the main power plants but it also might be off i actually have no idea what its fuel source is steam high uh it's coal it's coal it's running on coal power still um so this is one of the main power plants uh and then he mentioned that this is a backup power plant this only kicks in when required and it might actually be running on no it is running on coal uh there has been a lot of people have been trying to put together sustainable batteries to use electric boilers and it's an interesting concept but i don't know if it works uh next up we have stone stone this is going to have stone from a boat somewhere and this crashing it into all the sand that he's going to require to run all the glass to output for all the coal uh we should stop over here really quickly and talk about this this is obviously a coal contract for glass which he's burning some of the coal very very locally to create some power uh and then has a second one right beside it to bring in more coal for more glass uh and then over the back we have I believe this is medical right uh meds two and three yes so this is medical two and three which as we can see we've got a medical belt uh, medical medical two on a belt and this belt comes into storage and then from storage has a priority system so he's running medical three where is it into the colony first as the primary input and only the red one yeah the red one's medical three so he's running medical three in uh, as the primary and medical two as the secondary um something that has changed in the latest experimental update which may break his save is the game automatically chooses to run the best medical equipment you have first previously it used to be whatever was in the top slot first so run top slot first bottom slot second now it actually runs whichever is the best medical equipment as the primary which means there's potentially a situation where it's going to chew through the medical three uh here is waste management which is going to whoop, wrong belt uh which is exported out to here and then was actually exported all the way out to here which was being used to dump this island to put down well, the plan was more farms but um, now he's gone into sustainability mode. He's got to make sure he doesn't dump anything. So it goes into the many, many trash burners. He's just burning off the trash. I really hope the devs implement some sort of bigger, bigger burner. Um, 
because having lots of little ones is a little bit frustrating. I'd really like a, a deluxe version that's equivalent to like 10 of these at once. Uh, okay, uh, continuing around the map, we have uh, contracts. So we have, this is obviously quartz. This is going to be quartz import. Oh no, that's wood import. Uh, that's coal to, gla uh, coal to gold. No idea where that goes. Um, quartz, I'm sure quartz is dealt with. That's rock import. Uh do 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 quartz for use i think there, actually there might be a second one okay there might be a second uh quartz import so or quartz second quartz processing build okay so this is quartz for use according to the notes and that makes the silicon poly which is then going to run all around the map to create our maintenance or well, to create microchips microchips are uh, consumer no Electronics 2 and Electronics 3, uh, most of which goes into maintenance, unfortunately, uh, and also into a whole bunch of solar panels, uh, mainly for personal use. Uh, this is hooked into... This has to be gold. This is gold processing. Hey, gold processing is right here. Oh, buried. Absolutely buried. Um, That's all these gold furnaces, just two of them. Two of them is actually an awful lot of gold. You don't really use a lot of gold in the game. Uh, this is the rock import. As I said, there is a ship that disappears, goes and brings in rock, uh, well, rock from the world map, and dumps it in these many, many boxes. He does need to use a good portion of that. That rock. One belt. That one. Rock. Uh, does use a good portion of rock uh, for converting into sand. Uh, more solar panels later. We have... This looks like it. Yes, this is the second quartz. So this is bringing in uh, quartz for solar panels. So uh, about, I think it's 40%. Uh, where are we? So uh, we bring in 2160 quartz and 720 of that needs to be converted into the solar cells to be shipped back out. So it looks like he's got two builds here running with one, two, three, four arc furnaces running flat out, which is going to require an awful lot of hydrogen to keep running. And then a whole lot of machines make a whole lot of solar cells, which go into storage and then out of storage into both this boat and this boat to be exchanged for more quartz to bring back the quartz to then have positive amounts of quartz to deal with well we did find that giant bucket the giant bucket full of quartz uh all that comes from these two imports all right uh next up going around the map i believe this is slag this is slag for sour water sour water is going into tanks has a dumping system should he ever have a backup and then runs into another balancer uh which then runs into we'll find it eventually uh aha secondary oil build from looks of it uh so yes uh actually no this just looks like it's doing sour water processing sour water into fertilizer into fertilizer too yeah this is just doing fertilizer too on site and then that's going to go off to the multitude of farms that are around the map all right continuing around the map uh we have a whole bunch more farms to go with our more farms to go with uh this is so this is going to be the vehicle parts for uh iron ore which turns out looks like he's smelting on site so because he's bringing the iron ore here he's actually got the arc furnaces right here to create the iron and steel needed to make the vehicle parts too on site to then ship them back out to bring in a surplus amount of iron ore which is going to travel to here uh i think he named this central bus system yes so he does have a central bus system with a certain amount of belts with a certain amount of materials wrapping all the way around the island uh to account for all the different things he has to produce um over here i'm wondering if he makes glass on site he does he makes glass on site uh from i uh, know it's limestone i want rock sand sand is coming from here to here to here to here rock rock uh sorry rock is rock is crashing in gravel gravel is crashing in sand don't forget you also need sand for uh the copper processing so it looks like yes he's making the copper on site he's making the glass on site he's making the iron steel on site to make uh electronics that's not what i'm looking for i'm looking for oh that's the next one i need to talk about uh you vehicle parts one vehicle parts one to then make vehicle parts two on site i don't think 
can you be done an electric assembler? Oh, you can. You can be done a robotic assembler. Um, so he, like, he could upgrade those to robotic assemblers and have more power usage, but less people usage. But he has got to sustainability, like I said. So tweaking a system is dangerous. Uh, over here, we have your ship. Okay, so this is construction parts for limestone. So over here, he's making construction part one. Yes, uh, which is going to require the iron, the wood, and the concrete slabs. So... Uh, that looks like concrete slabs. Concrete slabs right there, which again requires more sand. Uh, and... Yep, one giant box full. And then construction part one, which is converting into construction part two to have them both available in the network because it's also making threes and fours here, it turns out. But a good portion of them are coming out here and going back into the ship so we can bring in limestone. So this is how he gets most of his, well, all of his limestone, actually. And funnily enough, this is one thing I observed. He, um, the modules. The modules, you can pass items in and out of them. So he's actually daisy-chaining all these together. So what they have to do is they have to empty every single one of them in the last one. Once that's empty, that's when the ship can finally empty that last slot and then leave again. Yes, but also notice this is on uh, slow uh, speed. Uh, another thing he's done is he set a lot of the ships to use the lower amount of diesel uh, to take the extra trip time because they just carry so much. So you, nine times out of ten, you don't need them to do fast loops. All right, uh, continuing around the island, we have this is where I'm looking for. We have medical for uh, copper. So this is where he's bringing in his copper. It looks like copper is going into this build and then continues down there to go back to the mega factory. Uh, we have more solar, more solar, more solar with a power plant running on electric boilers. Electric boilers, it looks like, uh, which makes life a very simple. Oh, this is a battery. This is a battery. Okay, uh, this is one of the battery systems I was talking about. So we have an electric boiler which is running into a high pressure turbine because these make 24 steam. This uses 24 steam. Uh, as far as the turbines go, uh, between a high pressure and a high pressure two, they don't get any more efficient uh, in the way of steam usage. It's, it's just a little bit of a space issue and a person issue uh but instead he has gone with two separate uh of the high pressure turbine mark one and then he's hooked these into a number of generators and then a lot of flywheels and the idea is that every single time constantly he's going to be consuming uh 1.3 megawatts worth of power to run into this guy which is then going to convert into well possibly um what's the return 80 percent, 80 percent. so he makes 800 watts worth of power uh potentially for the 1.3 megawatts he puts in but he's storing all that up in flywheels uh and he just has it as a constant power usage the idea is right now when it's becoming rainy and the system's probably in a higher usage state he has power level 12. so these are 12 13 14 15 so this is the last of the generators and these are going to kick in and we'll notice this number goes down because the weather's not nice the weather's very very much not not nice and whilst the weather's not nice, he can pull some power out of the flywheel batteries and run them into these generators and then use the downtime to then charge them back up. Yeah, again, we have another low pressure turbine running off the excess from both of these guys, which is another megawatt on into its own uh, drive shaft. Funny thing is, oh, these are three megawatts each. So that's three, six, nine, twelve. 12 megawatts worth of mechanical power is the maximum he can pull off these these drive shafts. These are the way they are built, uh, the way they are. You could uh, take these guys and add another stack on the end. You can make the the battery battery section of your power plants as long as you want. You can have as many flywheels as you want, but you can either uh, only apply 12 megawatts worth of mechanical force into the drive shaft and 12 megawatts worth of mechanical power off the drive shaft at a time. So this is why actually we can see it's, it's it's falling right now because it's again a rainy day, uh, and then none of them are running. Let me guess the weather just changed. I just missed the heavy rain, did I? I must have. Yep. So now it's taking the opportunity to charge them back up, and then when heavy rain kicks back in, it'll deplete them again. All right. Uh, continuing around the very very back of the map, we have some more rain catches. He's going to have a lot of rain catches laying around. Also a lot of irrigated farms. Not. Actually, maybe they are all on belts. 
Yeah, I think they're all being belt driven out to the front lines. Uh, water is going to come from a little bit from everywhere. Uh, he has saved a lot of topsoil, as I said, for more farming area, because that was the plan. Uh, also, where are we? Uh, yeah, so we have a couple of ramps worth of dirt and then um, a couple of, I don't know, what do we call this? A dirt fort? A dirt fort. Um, a couple of dirt forts where he's physically ramped up the area bit by bit by bit and keeps putting in retaining walls so he can get another level higher, another level higher uh, to save up all that dirt for, like I said, future farming projects. The copper at the back of the map has been um, thoroughly cut into. This is just rock from memory. Um, I love the zigzag on the way down. Uh, so he has copper. He's taking a good chunk out of it. Uh, stone at the back of the map has also has a good chunk out of it. Iron over here has a good chunk out of it. Uh, biggest catch with Curland is you need to actually extend the island out further with a whole bunch of fill to get in to get in the last of this iron, iron and copper and other resources at the back of the map. We have another solar field going in here. No idea what the plan was there. Uh, and funnily enough, half of that slag. Um... Yes, yes. Oh, another one of those lovely dirt ramps. So, uh, this has been Zinc's 100% sustainability island. It is 100% stable. I have run this, say, for about four hours myself, just wandering around the map, having a good look. I'm impressed. I am very, very impressed. I also know that uh, on Captain Difficulty, that is especially hard. On Sailor Difficulty, where every single uh, rig out in the world map that's zero. Uh, every single rig on the world map is infinite. Uh, life. Oh, crap. That's also zero. Uh, he did well. Um, all right. Third, third one's the charm. Every single rig on the world map, map in the Sailor difficulty, um, they're infinite. They're infinite. That makes life a lot easier. But um, what he's done to get 100% sustain sustainable on a normal difficulty map is definitely impressive definitely impressive and that's the total unity count um he is bringing in 2.7 per month but when contracts apply and a ship leaves and comes back there is obviously potentially a very very large hit to his unity count uh and edicts edicts are going to be a stable amount rock bones are going to be a stable amount uh the sawmill is going to be stable he does have health bounces up and down a little bit uh, along with hospitals depending on which medical pack is in supply i believe originally from on the current expansion experimental patch they've tweaked things a little bit but previously uh he said it prioritized medical two first and then anything extra was medical three that would just you know get shunted in if there was extra if there was extra uh but yes this has been the uh the full tour so could you do me a favor could you do me a favor we got all the way to the end um definitely give me a like definitely give me a like i'd love to see more maps like this if you have a map like this please reach out to me reach out to me on discord reach out to me via twitter preferably discord because i see those messages much quicker than i ch check twitter but yes reach out to me because i'd love to do more tours like this it's taken a while um uh, the video is a little bit long but by the same token it's taken me a lot longer to actually have a look through the map and learn a couple of things along the way. So, with all that said, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you, Zinc, so much for sharing. And I will see you guys in the very next video. All right, bye.